Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie, and this is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, my preferences, and today I really am excited. I know, I know, I always say I'm excited. I do love knitting socks, which is kind of ironic because I don't necessarily love wearing socks, but today I'm gonna share with you my favorite short row toe and heel technique. This is not the technique that I think most of us are first taught how to do. It's called the boomerang heel and a variation of it, which is a yo-yo heel. If you wanna learn all about this, click subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up, and let's knit. So the short row toe and heel is my favorite heel and toe technique. There's a few different reasons for it. One, there's no picking up stitches. There's no decreasing stitches away to get back to your original stitch count. You maintain the same stitch count through the entire sock. So I really enjoy that. Right here, I have a sock. This was actually the first sock that I ever designed. And this is mosaic knitting. And I wanted the pattern to go pretty much from um, the foot of the sock all the way up to the cuff. I knitted this toe up. Because the stitch count never changed, this heel didn't in any way disrupt the knitting, this color work knitting. So it's just very easy to do color work using a short row toe and heel technique. As much as I love the short row toe and heel, I did not love the instructions that I was given when I was first learning how to do this type of sock construction. I was using a method that is um, taught by Ann Budd, and I think it's one that most of us are taught how to do. Let's just say for right now, I didn't like it. I was in a conundrum because I was like, well, I really like this idea of this sock construction. I think there's so many advantages to it, but I hate this method that I'm using. There has to be another way. And I found it. And it's called the boomerang heel and a variation of it called the yo-yo heel. And when I learned this way of doing short row toe and heels, and let me tell you the difference between the technique that I use and the one that I was originally taught is incredibly simple difference that will blow your mind if you're at all familiar with short row toe and heels. No matter what technique you're using, all short row toe and heels have the same basic structure. So first I'm gonna go over that structure with you so you have a good theoretical understanding of what it is that you're doing when using this sock construction technique. Then I'm going to demonstrate for you how I utilize the boomerang heel and then I'll show you its cousin, its variation, the yo-yo heel. As always, I have time code in the description box below so you can skip around to any part of the video that you like. Right here I have a little sample that I worked up. If you watched my Knit Tea, Unpopular Knitting Opinions, which I will link up here, you will have seen me working on this little sample. And the way that this is constructed is actually very simple. You work a series, two sets of short rows that mirror each other. The first set is worked from the widest point of the toe and heel and you go back and forth, back and forth, like this until you get to the narrowest part of the piece. If this is your toe, this is you know the end of the toe. Then you work a second set of short rows that work back and forth from the narrowest point all the way down back to the widest part of the toe and heel and create this little pocket. So if I were to take this little sample and cut along here so that I'm cutting it in half and you could flatten it out, this is what it would look like. Please bear with me, I am not the greatest illustrator in the world, but it would look like an hourglass and you are working back and forth, back and forth along that hourglass till you get to the middle of it and then you work back and forth mirroring it, all right? But as you mirror it, you're rejoining those lines and that's what pulls those two halves together to create the 3D object. So 
this is actually kind of illustrating what it looks like when you look down into the short row, okay? All right, so I'm gonna use, once again, Judy's Magic Cast On to start this sample, because that is my favorite. Toe up, sock, cast on. And I'm only going to cast on 24 stitches. This will be a very small sample. A little bit of heel math for you now. Whenever you're doing a short row toe and heel, generally you work 50% of your stitches as short rows. So 24 divided by two is 12. You can do more stitches. You can go up to 60% if you want a deeper heel. And the short row heel is divided into three sections. This marker is dying on me. Um, and these center stitches get worked every single row, and then you have your short row wraps on this side and this side. So all you have to do is divide the number of stitches you're working by three. In this case, that's four. So four wraps on the right side of the heel. I will have four wraps on the left side of the heel. So I'm going to work eight short rows all together. That's basic <laughs> heel math for you when doing a short row heel. No matter what short row heel technique that you utilize, they all start the exact same way. So I'm gonna knit across to one stitch before the end of this row of knitting that I have. Here's where I would turn the work, and this is where you use whatever short row technique that you want to use. I'm gonna just go ahead and use German double stitch, it's just a personal preference. To do German double stitch, you actually work into this stitch here that is actually being left behind, turn your work, and then with your working yarn in front, you slip that stitch back to your right needle and bring the yarn over the needle to capsize this stitch. Normally capsizing your stitch is a mistake, but for the German double stitch, it actually becomes functional. So now I have to purl back to the other side of the work. So I need to bring my yarn around between the needles as if I were doing ribbing. And I'm going to now purl to one stitch before the end of the row to do my second short row. Here I am at the turning point, all right? I'm going to go ahead and purl this stitch, turn my work. Again, with the yarn, the working yarn in front, I'm going to slip that stitch back, and then I'm going to bring the yarn over the needle to the back of the work, and that capsizes that stitch. And then I can start knitting across to one stitch before um, my wrap. Here I am, one stitch before this German double stitch. Here is my next turning point. I'm gonna go ahead and work that stitch, turn my needles. With my yarn in front of the needle, I'm going to slip that stitch back to my right needle and take the yarn and bring it over the needle, pulling this stitch over. Then I gotta bring my working yarn in between my needles to the front so I can purl back to my previous wrap stitch, which is a German double stitch. There is my previously wrapped stitch. This is one stitch before that, so I'm going to purl into that, turn my work with my yarn in front. I'm going to slip that stitch back and bring my yarn over the needle to the back of the work, and now I can knit back. And that's how I'm going to continue for the rest of this set of short rows, which is knitting to one stitch before my previous wrap, and then doing a German double stitch. But again, you can use any short row technique that you want to use. So 
I've completed all of my short rows here. And here it is. This is what it looks like. All short row heel and toes start off in this manner. But how you work these wraps and your second set of short rows is the difference between um, the method that I learned from Ann Budd, the boomerang short row heel, and the yo-yo short row heel. Next, I'm going to show you the boomerang heel. The original technique that I was taught, I would start doing my second set of short rows while simultaneously working these wrapped stitches. The way this would basically work is I'd come here to my first short row. Here's my wrap. Here's the stitch that that wrap needs to be worked with. So I'd work the wrap and the stitch together and then I have to turn my work. So I would leave another wrap behind and then I'd go back to the purl back to this side where I would also have a wrap and a stitch to work together. So I would leave a wrap behind here, work my way back over to this side. Now I have to work these two wraps with this one stitch. And so basically what you're doing is a knit three together. So you do that knit three together, and then you purl, leave a wrap behind, then you purl back to the other side, Look, once again, I have two wraps that I need to work with this stitch. So you then do a purl three together to join all that together and close up those gaps. Then leave, then leave another wrap behind here, go back and work. And now you're working back and forth. And when you come to that turn, having to do a knit three together on one side and a purl three together on the other side so that you're closing up your gaps as you're creating the second set of short rows. But in the boomerang heel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work all my wrap stitches, knit across these stitches over here, and then come back around. And then once all my wrap stitches are worked, then I'll start my second set. Yes. That's all the boomerang heel is, is working all your wrap stitches before you work your next set. That's all it is. Let's get that started. Here are my four sti center stitches. So I'm going to knit one, two, three, four. Now, right here, if you want to, you can place a marker, which will help you identify where to start that first turn for your next set of short rows. Um, I don't usually use a marker, I just go ahead and count my stitches, but this would be a good place to place a marker. So here I am working those German double stitches. Okay, so there, all these wrap stitches are now worked. I'm going to go ahead and work my second half of stitches that have just been hanging out <laughs> while working those toes. Now I'm back to where I've been working those toe stitches and I'm at my second set of wrapped stitches. So I'm just gonna knit this together. All right, so all of my wrapped stitches from my first set of short rows have now been worked. I'm ready to start working my next set of short rows. And again, we're gonna work these short rows, this time working from the narrowest part of the toe to the widest part of the toe. So I'm going to knit the four center stitches, one, two, three, four. Now I'm at the turning point. So I'm going to work another German double stitch. So I'm going to knit into that, turn my work <laughs> with the yarn in front, slip my stitch back, take the yarn, pull it over the needle, then bring the yarn back between the needles to the front of the work so that I can purl back. One, two, three, four. And right here, if you look very closely, that's that wrap stitch. So this is my turning point. I'm going to do my German double stitch on the purl side. So purl, slip back, bring my working yarn over the needle, and now I can knit back. 
Now, from this point, I'm going to knit one, two, three, four. And now my wrapped stitches are acting as a stitch marker because here's my wrap. I'm going to work that wrap. Now I'm ready to do turn my work for the next short row. So I'm going to work my double German double stitch, turn, round, and purl back. Here I am at my previous wrap stitch. I'm going to work that wrap stitch and do another German double stitch to turn my work to do my next short row. That's all you're doing at this point is you are working to your wrapped stitch, working that wrapped stitch, doing your next turn for your short row back and forth until you have worked a complete set. German double stitch. And that's it. All my short rows have now been worked. Now what I can do is just knit around the entire toe. As I knit around the toe, I'll still have a wrapped stitch on the left and right side to work. Here is my last wrapped stitch on the left side of the toe, so I work that before I turn my needles and I work the stitches that have just been hanging out. So I have one more wrap stitch that I need to work, which was my last wrap stitch that I did. Just knit that. And there it is. All my short rows are complete. All of my wrap stitches have been worked. And now I have this little bit of toe right here. So I love the boomerang heel because you work all those wrap stitches at once and then you do your next set of short rows and you're not having to worry about working three wraps of yarn together on a purl stitch. It's like doing a double purl decrease, which is a pain in the tuchus in my opinion. But there is a disadvantage to the boomerang heel. <gasps> One of the things I love about the short row heel and toe is it makes doing uninterrupted stranded color work from the cuff to the foot much easier because it can keep a consistent stitch count but if you're using the boomerang short row and you're doing stranded color work you work those heel stitches with just one strand of yarn which means when you go to work those wraps and you come and you're going to work across those instep stitches you only have one color with you so that could disrupt your color pattern yeah not great but there's a very easy variation to the boomerang heel called the yo-yo heel, which avoids that problem and is great for stranded color work. So that's what I'm going to show you next. All right, I feel like I've said this a million times already, but all short row toe and heels start off the same way. So I have a little sample here where I've already worked most of the first set of short rows. This time, however, I used the yarn over technique for my short row. So I'm just going to finish off my last two short rows before I show you how the wraps are worked for the yo-yo heel. Uh, I have one, two, three, and I'm going to knit to one stitch before my previous yarn over. So here it is. Here's my previous yarn over and here's my gap. Here's that stitch. I want to make sure that I recognize that this is my yarn over, this is the stitch before it. So this is where I turn my work. To do the yarn over, it's really simple. You turn your work and you do a yarn over and move on with your life. Um, so I'm going to do a yarn over on the purl side. So I like to do it by bringing my yarn to the back of the needle and then I just do a purl stitch thusly and that creates the yarn over. And I'm going to purl back to one stitch before my previous yarn over. So here's that previous yarn over. 
here's the stitch before it. So, oops, split the yarn. So now I just turn my work and I do a yarn over. So there are all of my completed short rows for the first half of the heel. Now I'm ready to start working my wrapped stitches before I do my second set of short rows. There's just one difference in how this is gonna work from the boomerang. I'm gonna start off the same, where I'm going to knit across my center stitches. Three, four. Here I'm at my yarn over, really important. Here's my yarn over, here's my gap. It's really important that you work this yarn over with the stitch that's on the other side of that gap. So I'm going to just knit two together with the yarn over and that stitch. And I'm going to do that across all these wraps. One, two, oops, that stitch got turned. One, two, three, and four. All right, so now I've worked all my wraps. Now with the boomerang heel, of course, I would start working these stitches back here that have just been chilling like a villain while I've been working my toe socks, but not this time. Nope, we're not doing the boomerang, we're gonna do the yo-yo. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work so that I can start working back across. You can just turn your work and go back across, but then you're gonna get a really big hole here. So I go ahead and I do another yarn over that'll help me bridge that gap later when I rejoin these toe stitches with the rest of the sock. So now I'm knitting across and I'm going to knit across to that first yarn over. So here again, here's that yarn over. This is the stitch before it and I wanna make sure I work that separate. Here's my yarn over, here's the gap. So I'm gonna to knit two together to close that gap. Or I'm sorry, purl two together to close that gap. So three, there's my last one. And again, I turn my work. I do a yarn over again for later. And now I'm ready to do my last set of short rows. So there it is. Those are my favorite toe and heel techniques for sock knitting, the boomerang short row, toe and heel, and the yo-yo variation. What's your favorite technique for knitting heels and toes for your socks? Are you like me and you're like, can I please avoid picking up stitches if I possibly can? Because that's me. <laughs> I know now when I first started the channel, I was always like, Am I speaking into the void? Now I know that I'm not speaking into the void. I'm so appreciative of everybody who has subscribed to my channel, who have commented. It's been so, so encouraging. Um, you know, I, I really am passionate about knitting and I'm passionate about this channel. And so I'm just really glad to be doing this and really glad that I'm getting any kind of positive response. Compliments are like my fuel. So, you know, thank you um, for the likes and the compliments and the interaction. It means a lot to me. If you'd like to find me on social media, you can find that all in the description box below. I just started a Facebook page for this YouTube channel. So I would love it if you would give it a look, give it a like. Um, I'm also thinking about starting up a Facebook group that would be kind of a, um, you know, a little annex to this channel. So if you're interested in that, please let me know, either here or on my Facebook page. That would be amazing. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, which will let you know whenever I upload a new video. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy knitting. Bye. Ugh. The knit tees are much faster. They're faster to shoot and they're faster to edit. Is there anything you'd like me to discuss in a knit tee? Because um, I'm looking for ideas. I'm always looking for ideas. So I love that. But there is a knit sit no. So that is the basic structure of the short row teal on a hoe. Um, yeah, boomerang and yo-yo. Do the boomerang, do the yo-yo. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so, oh, let me scratch my nose, okay.
as always, I have time stones. Do time stones? What are time stones? <laughs> I wish I had time stones. I could create more time for myself. I have a busy life. Anyway, 